Good evening. In tonight's episode, we're going to be pointing a $1 million telescope at one of the largest black holes ever discovered. We're also going to be looking at two more wonders and seeing where they rank on our infamous wonder wall. Could tonight be the night that we discover the greatest wonder of our night sky? Let's find out. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. Coming up on this week's episode, we'll be taking a look at the gem of our solar system and comparing how it looks for a $500 telescope versus a $10 billion space telescope. Wow. We're also going to learn how to spot the Hart Nebula and how you can image one of the largest black holes known to man from your own back garden. So I thought to kick things off this episode, we could start by looking at one of the top five highest rated beauty wonders in the entire series. It is a nebula shaped and sculpted into one of the most beautiful structures known to man. This is the Heart Nebula. Our first wonder of the night is an immense star-forming region. We often refer to these as stellar nurseries, since they are the birthplace of new baby stars. There is perhaps no more of a fitting shape for them then than that of the Heart Nebula. Visible for most of the year between the months of September and February, this deep sky object is the perfect Valentine's Day treat for you and a special someone. Its large glowing appearance make it an easy target for astrophotographers across the Northern Hemisphere. So easy in fact, that for our image comparison, I'm not even going to use the insanely cheap $500 Seastar S50 telescope. Instead, I'm going to be using its baby brother. Utilizing the wider field of view and its mosaic imaging function, I have captured this gorgeous shot of the Heart Nebula from my garden on a very small budget. It is mind blowing the amazing Things we can capture as amateurs. But to take this up several notches, I'm now using Telescope Live's remote observatory platform and its specialized filters to image the nebula in narrowband, revealing far more detail and structure in the nebulosity of this wonder than we could ever see in the visible light spectrum. And as for our space telescope, well it turns out the Hart Nebula is far too big of a target for the Hubble Space Telescope's narrow field of view. So instead, I've had to utilize another space telescope that was actually designed to identify comets. This is a view captured by the Neowise Space Telescope in infrared. This unique perspective cuts through the thick clouds of dust and gas and reveals the glow from these young, newborn stars. In terms of ratings, the Heart Nebula scores 96 for beauty, making it the most beautiful object of the series so far, whilst also scoring 67 in terms of power and 40 in terms of mystery. This gives our first wonder of the episode a wonder rating of... 68. Which means that the Heart Nebula actually ranks on our Wonder Wall in position 31st, which actually officially makes it the lowest ranked wonder in our series so far. Do you agree with my ratings? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and you could be with a chance of winning one of these incredible prizes. Last week, more than 60 of you entered into the giveaway by leaving your ratings in the comments down below. All you need to do in order to enter is score each of tonight's wonders out of 100. But I also do really enjoy it when you guys explain why you gave each wonder its particular rating. It does make for an interesting read. You can enter this giveaway once per episode, so that's 14 times in total across this series. The closing date for entries is the 31st of January, 2026. Best of luck. Next up, we're going to look at the crown jewel of our solar system. This is an object that when viewed through a telescope by Galileo himself was referred to as a planet with ears. It is, of course, Saturn. Now, Saturn is the second largest planet in our solar system, but here's the interesting thing about planets. Their name is derived from the Greek word wanderer. These wandering stars move across our night sky throughout the year in a way independent to actual stars. So in terms of when is the best time to spot them, that varies. As for Saturn, right now is a fantastic time to spot the ringed planet. It's only just reached opposition, meaning this is as good as it gets this year in terms of observations. With the help of even a tiny scope, you can make out its majestic rings. When it comes to astrophotography, however, seeing is a very different experience to imaging. In the case of planets, it's very hard to take an image or record a video of what you can actually see through your telescope. This is a video I captured using the 2-inch Seastar S50 Smart Telescope. You can just about make out its rings and perhaps understand why Galileo mistook these for a pair of ears or jug handles. Our remote observatory gives us some immense views of Saturn's rings and even distinguishes the different ring classes. In this image, you can identify the Cassini division of the rings very clearly. But what about this? 
Hubble goes above and beyond here. It has captured the ringed planet in incredible detail, as well as some of its many moons. As of March this year, the total of confirmed moons orbiting Saturn stands at 274. That is absolutely outrageous, isn't it? It's like its own little mini solar system, and the different coloured bands in Saturn's atmosphere allude to its immense power. I do generally think it is one of the most beautiful sights in our night sky when viewed for an eyepiece, which is why I'm giving it the highest beauty rating of any object in this series at 97. It also gets a respectable power rating of 73 and a mystery of 78, which results in a very high wonder rating of 83. Now with a rating of 83, this puts Saturn very high on our leaderboard. In fact, it puts it just within the top five. A very strong case can be made for Saturn being ranked number one. There is just something so surreal in its nature that makes it incredibly special. Yes, Jupiter and Mars are special blobs in our night sky, but Saturn's design is so unique. To be looking through the eyepiece of your telescope and exploring the night sky, and then all of a sudden, to just see it hanging there in the middle of space is such a breathtaking experience. That's really out there. You can go and see this tonight. Enjoy the rings whilst you can. In about 100 million years time, they'll be gone and Saturn will look just like any other gas giant. Well, if neither Saturn or the Heart Nebula is the ultimate wonder of our night sky, then maybe it could be a supermassive black hole. This is an object so strange that up until the age of 15, I didn't actually think they were real. I thought they only existed in science fiction. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Messier Object 87, the first black hole we ever directly imaged. Now, how do you find an object that hides in the dark. More difficult yet, how do you find something that consumes anything that gets close enough to it to actually take a peek? Black holes exist on the boundary between reality and science fiction. Of all the mysteries our universe has to offer, this is one that will surely forever remain a secret. Getting close to a black hole isn't an issue at all. As you can see here, I found one inside the National Space Center. The real challenge is getting out of one. Living long enough to tell your tale is where the true conundrum lies. For the most part, black holes are incredibly small vacuum cleaners that zip through our universe quietly. The only way to observe them is through their influence on their surroundings. But as the design of our cosmos would have it, lying at the center of almost every single galaxy is a supermassive black hole. We have been given a free ticket to observe the universe's most powerful creation. It almost feels like they have been placed center stage to demonstrate to all who exist their true destructive potential. But due to the violent nature, even at the center of a galaxy, it's not easy for his backyard amateurs to image them. To find M87 from your own garden, you are going to have to go searching through a garden of galaxies. Located in the constellation of Virgo and best observed during the spring months, this is a very unique sight in our night sky. It's from looking at this huge group of galaxies that you must then basically pick out the most boring looking galaxy that you can see. Within this supergiant elliptical galaxy, there are several trillion stars. That's right, stuff your billions, we've gone up a level here. This galaxy is one of the biggest galaxies in our observable universe. So I suppose it only makes sense that if you're going hunting for supermassive black holes, this is where you should be looking. 
It almost feels like the cosmos is speaking to us and trying to warn us of this monstrosity by arranging four nearby galaxies to give an unamused face that even has a cute little button nose. The sea star cannot resolve much detail from the galaxy, but to be fair, even the $1 million remote observatory setup struggles with the immense glow from trillions of stars circling around this freak of nature. In fact, it's only through the help of Hubble and imaging in ultraviolet and infrared wavelengths that we can see these huge jets being emitted from the core. The real game changer came in 2017, when a global network of radio telescopes came together to capture this black hole. Their combined power gave them an angular resolution that was sufficient enough to observe impossible targets like the event horizons of black holes. I'm sure one day we will get the opportunity to explore a black hole up close. The question is, who will be brave enough to take on the task of diving in to the unknown? Personally, I know for a fact I would not be up for that job at all. I am terrified of them. But what about you? So, in all honesty, Messier 87 wasn't really much to look at, hence a very low beauty rating. But it simply does not get any more powerful or mysterious than a black hole, which is why it becomes the first object to max out a 100 rating in any of our criteria. Now, because I love talking about black holes so much, here's an interesting bonus follow-up piece of information. A few years after imaging M87, the Event Horizon Telescope decided to try and image the supermassive black hole at the centre of our own galaxy. Which isn't as easy as you'd expect given how much dust, gas and other stars you have to filter your view through, but it did successfully image our galactic core, taking this image. And if you're looking at this thinking, wow, that looks remarkably similar to the M87 black hole image, you'd be right to say so. But the thing is, the M87 black hole is a lot further away. So let's make things fair. In terms of size, the M87 black hole is over a thousand times larger than Sagittarius A, our own supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. So in terms of the biggest black holes known to man, is M87 the biggest that we've ever discovered? And with a wonder rating of 72, this puts Messier Object 87 ranked 25th on our leaderboard. I am very aware that the ratings for M87 may be very controversial and a lot of you are going to disagree with it on certain aspects, which is why I strongly encourage you to leave your own ratings in the comments down below. And if you do, you could be of a chance of winning your very own brand new Seastar S50 Smart Telescope.
Right, with that being said, we have reached the end of today's episode. And if you're thinking, geez, that flew by very quickly, then it's likely because I've made sure that all these episodes have no ad interruptions in the middle of them. So these series are as fun and immersive as possible. It does, however, mean that I am going to lose a substantial amount of ad revenue from these videos. So if you'd like to help support the channel in the future production of more series like this, then you can join my Patreon for as little as one pound a month and get sneak peeks on upcoming stargazing content. Thank you very much for joining me tonight and I hope to see you again next week when we'll explore three new wonders and see where they rank on our wonder wall. I'm Damon Scotting and this was Astronomical. Next week we'll be taking a closer look at the Eye of God, as well as one of the most beautiful binary stars in our night sky and also how to spot Hubble's variable nebula this winter. So make sure you're subscribed and keeping your eye out for new videos every week. Thanks for watching and clear skies. Ha 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 ha!